You want to talk about the Little Mermaid? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So here, this is my take on live actions. I know that it's like completely split, and they're either you're either for or you're against them. I am somebody that does like them, but I can understand why people would not like them. Also, but so I had for this one, I was leery. I wasn't sure for for different reasons, but in the end, I did like it. It wasn't my favorite out of the live actions. Like to me, I think I was trying to go down the list and think about like Aladdin, Cruella, Beauty and the Beast, Cinderella. I definitely think I it's better than like Cinderella. I think it's be- better than Beauty and the Beast, but I still think Aladdin and Cruella are better. What about you? What? Cruella. Do you think Cruella is better? I yeah. do think Cruella, Cruella was better than. Um, I think. Uh, did you see Cruella? Which- I what? loved Cruella. Cruella is like probably my favorite live action. I know we've talked about this before, but um, I still think you guys should watch Cruella. It's really good. I mean, too. I'm a big fan of uh, what's her name. Um, <coughs> Emma Stone. Emma Stone. Yeah. Cruella is fun. As as like a musical theater kid, it's really fun. The musical numbers are all very very fun. Yeah, it's it's wait, wait. Yeah, it's good. It's well done. Yes. Okay, we have Sydney here. She's kind of a phantom. I don't know what what's going on with the camera, but she's in and out. But she's gonna chat yeah. Little Mermaid with me since you guys haven't seen it yet. So, anyways, um, I thought the cast overall was pretty great. Um, I know I read a lot of bad things about Melissa McCarthy. Of course, there was all the things going on with ha- Halle Bailey. Um, when I saw Eric at first, I was kind of questioning things. Um, but I, in the end, I ended up liking him. He's played by John. I don't know how to say his name. Howard King. Um, my main beef with one of the cast was Flounder. He did not cut it for me. He was too muted in color and he was not chubby enough. I know they're trying to go more realistic with him, but it just, to, to me, he didn't translate. I feel like everybody else translated. Even Sebastian was kind of wonky looking a little bit, but but he was funny and and whatnot. But um, Flounder was the the dud for me. But everybody else was good. I know people don't like Aquafina, but I thought she was really good as well. Oh, I love Aquafina. Yeah. Okay. She's she's another one that's like you love her or you hate her. But I thought she was perfect as Scuttle. Um, the the other thing that was really cool was the person who played Vanessa, who is basically the uh, person that, how do I say this? Turns in, she's Ursula, but- uh, She's she's the transmutated Ursula, yeah. Yes, so the that was played by Jessica Alexander. Man, she was really good. Like when, when she was trying to lure Eric and everything, you believed that was Ursula. I don't know how to explain it other than you just see it for yourself, but I was sold with her. She was really good. Like I felt like, yes, I'm watching Ursula. And back to Ursula, I thought Melissa McCarthy was awesome. She didn't, you know how Melissa McCarthy in like all her movies kind of has that kind of way about her, like, I don't know, her just her antics or her way she's mm-hmm. comedic. It was like- She's almost not... like, an every... yeah, I, I, just to, to, to your point, she, I feel like I'm always watching Melissa McCarthy yes. just playing whatever character she happens to be in, but it's always right. Melissa McCarthy. Yeah, so that's what I was worried about here, but I felt like I was watching Ursula. Like, she didn't have that kind of one note thing that she does in every movie. I mean, uh, of course, she's going to shine through a little bit, but I thought she was great. I really believed her. And uh, in the end, as I'm watching the movie, I really believed the characters. Like Halle Bailey had such like a sensitive, like softer demeanor to her. Her voice was amazing. Um, I believed all the char- characters other than Flounder. <laughs> well, and, and I just looked up Flounder. You know who guys, who voiced Flounder? Yes, Jacob Tremblay. Tremblay. No. 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 Uh-uh. No, oh no! I sorry, think... sorry, sorry. No, you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah, no, you're right. I'm sorry. Yeah, but uh, isn't that isn't he the little dude from uh? from um he was in what's luca. it called yes he's the voice of luca but he he's augie in um wonder thank you 
Yes, he's in Wonder. He's he's also in that Bad Boy. I think it's called Bad Boys. Good Boys. Good Boys. Good Boys. Okay. So yeah, he's. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh, I feel like he's in yes. a lot of stuff. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so, no, so, so actually, my eleven-year-old lines up with you, Jin, right? Wait, I'm sorry. Oh yeah, Davy Diggs. Oh no, we're what? gonna yeah. Davy Diggs. The, yeah. the new the new uh, thing. Yeah, who I really like, but I did not like for what I heard from Under the Sea um when when he was singing that in whatever like commercial i saw and i love to be digs i think he's insanely talented but i did not like oh. what i heard oh sebastian yeah i thought he was fine i don't know if it was the accent that bothered me when he I was, was singing or what he just didn't sebastian. sound right to me you wish he had more of an accent i didn't have any problem with him i was thought he was going to be the one i had a problem with but i he didn't seem to bother me that was a tiny bit too subtle to what settle subtle accent oh he needed a heavier accent so tell them the part that you thought was missing the scene from oh um in the original little mermaid the scene where the chef and sebastian like i don't know how to explain it like yeah no no no. when they fight the scene with them they took that out and they replaced it with like a song a different song (laughs) so that was kind of a bummer because that was a funny scene with scuttle that's one of my favorite songs too. The scuttlebutt song was what replaced it. Oh shit! Well, that's gonna definitely be divisive. <laughs> it's it's tough. So I, my Jen, my eleven year old lines up completely with you. She saw it. Yeah, yeah, like it almost a hundred percent. Like views on it were the same thing. Yeah, and she like she really enjoyed it. Like that we went and watched Guardians today, and she's like, oh, you know what? Um. The Little Mermaid was really good. You should really go and see it. Like we should go and see it again. Like really, yeah, you should. And so she really enjoyed it. And I think that's, I mean, it's like the Mario Brothers movies in some way. I think that's who it was aimed at. Anyway. Okay, this was a million times better than Super Mario Brothers. I mean, I she likes Super Mario. I it was not my favorite. They're okay. There's a couple but- more things I'm gonna touch on. I, the one other thing that I thought was going to be bad from what I saw in the previews was like the color grading because everything looks so drab and dark. Dark, and I was yeah. Like, Are we re-? And, and that is pretty common amongst the live actions. So I was thinking, are they really going to make this like a dark movie? But it wasn't. It, was, it wasn't overly bright like people were, you know, you guys were talking about with, uh, aqu- what was it? Aquafina? No, not aqu- oh. Aquaman. Oh, Aquaman. Oh, yeah, no, that was okay. garbage. Um, <coughs> it wasn't like overly done. It was like bright where it needed to be and dark where, you know, it just seemed natural and normal. So I was happy with that because if that whole movie was like dark and there wasn't color in it, I would have been super annoyed. Um, and then what was my other? Oh, there is a cameo from um, Jody Benson, who was yeah. the original voice of, of Ariel. And so when that was that kind of fun. I was excited when I saw her. What? When did she show up? Because I look told, for her I told... like in the market. Like go to this little okay. market, Caribbean market, or I don't know if it's technically Caribbean, but that's what it felt like. Um, well, only because it's a you know, it's not a real place. It's a fancy right. place. Um, but look for her in the market. That was kind of fun. Wait, to see. I was glad. This she isn't was a true story. Huh? Well, no. There's actually a theory in the Disney verse that oh, the ship that the ship that Ariel um, goes into with the statue of King Eric is actually the ship with Elsa's parents. Yep. Heard about that one. I hate yep. that theory. That that crashed on their way to see them, and that's how like the Disney verse is like connected. Yeah, I think you did talk about that. She knows all this alternate. She she's all into that. I was really into this stuff when I was like nine, and I knew I knew like a lot of stuff, but I don't really. That's no, yeah, that's where my eleven year old's at right now. She's kind of yeah. steered away from the Disney. <laughs> that's okay. Good for you. I think you're making a good choice. <laughs> no, <laughs> Elemental. It looks very interesting or elements the new or is it elemental? no it's elemental it's, it's elemental yeah yeah <laughs> it looks very interesting what I'm, is this I'm, another disney it's, movie it's a, oh, well, it's that a comes new, out it's, june pixar like yeah like next week mm, i think yeah. it's it's june 6th oh it's, it's next week pixar. i'm not excited yeah. for that no i mean no. it looks okay it doesn't i don't know it's it not should, exciting I, me. I hope it's not like, opening next week because it's gonna get like uh it's gonna get wrecked by spider-man so 
Yes. Oh wait, no, 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 it's not, no, no, no. It's not next week then. It's June six is two weeks. It's go yeah, it's going up against something. I know, but I looked at it and said this it's two different audiences. Like there's yes. there's another movie coming out on the same day. Transformers comes out the next week. So next week is um is Spider Man across the Spider Verse, and the week after that is um, oh, and Indiana Jones. Rise of the Beast. Yep. Indiana Jones is the thirtieth. Yeah. Um, I think strays? right in the middle. I wrote down Strays. Oh, have you seen the trailer for Strays? Dude, so. that I'm looks so good. On what it... That looks fun as hell. It is oh, the, the, the wildly inappropriate dog movie. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. Like yeah, wildly yeah. inappropriate. And, uh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I cannot wait for that. Where they each. The, the preview alone, when the dogs eat the shrooms, and like, is it because my have my hands look like human hands? I lose it every time. It looks so good. I cannot wait for that. I'm for sure spending my hard earned dollars on that. I cannot wait. Okay. I know. I'm I'm looking forward to that's coming out soon. I think it's end of June. Uh, I hate to admit it. I'm more excited about it than uh, the youngest. I'm, I I want to see the Barbie movie. I know. Oh, I'm in. I'm totally like, in. Legit, dude. Did that preview movie? has me really want to see that movie. We are it, so excited. I, it looks so over the top and outrageous. When we saw That's the perfect. preview, we were dying because they were talking about, be- what was it? Beach, beach something. Oh man, I wish it, I was looking we're at my have mom. a beach off. Are we? I'll, to- oh, beach off. I'll totally have a beach off you with off. you. <laughs> We'll, I'll beat you off over here. I'm gonna beat him off after I beat you off. Yeah, like the we, whole time. Because we like... already have this all set up. We're taking the little <laughs> nine-year-olds to Barbie. It's gonna be their movie, and then we're like, saw the preview, and we're like, holy shit! <laughs> I think but, comedies are getting ramped back up in the yeah. correct way. Yeah. I think comedies are going back to like the super bads, the 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 comedies of the early 2000s, late 90s, where, like, Tropic Thunder, like, you couldn't make Tropic Tropic Thunder in 2016, but I think you probably make it in 2025. Mm. I think we're going back in that direction. I just saw The Machine, right? The Burt Kreischer. Oh, I'm I'm going to see it. Yeah, how was it? I'm going to see it tomorrow night with with Lish. So here's the deal. I'm, I'm, no spoilers. I'll, I'll just give you just, it was a really good movie. I, I truly enjoyed it. I laughed out loud a couple of times. You could tell it was the first time Bert was ever in a movie. Like okay. it, you could tell it was his acting okay. was a little rough. Yeah, it was rough, <laughs> but it was, it was a fun time. I, was, I wanted, I wanted to do well because if it, it, it does well, then he's already greenlit for his next script he wrote, which is called fat astronauts. Which is supposed to be just a a raucous comment. Like I, I want I want this to do well because I want to see fat astronauts. I mean, it, it it was I enjoyed it. I to be fair, I love Bert. He's a great comedian. I love the that's the only reason story. I'm going to see it. That and Mark yeah. Hamill. The only reason we're going to see this yes. fucking movie. Yeah, right. and they were both they were both great. I enjoyed it all. The, the only drawback I'll say is that he kept his wife's name the same, Leanne. But he no. changed his daughter's names, Georgia and Isla. Isla. But we, but we all know his daughter's names. Like, I, why'd you change your daughter's names when we all? If you've seen Bert one time, you know his daughter's names are Georgia and Isla. Anyways, that's the only drawback I would say that the flaw, I guess, is like I know your daughter's names. Why did you change them? It was yeah. a lot of fun. Truly enjoyed it. Sweet. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, but to, but my point is, Barbie seems like it's going in that direction. Bert is definitely pushing in that direction. I, I want to see more comedies that are not woke <laughs> and are more like ridiculous. I mean, comedy is supposed to challenge barriers, not li- live within them. And I feel like we're starting to go back in that direction, which makes me happy because I'm tired of comedies that are in the box and safe like comedies are not supposed to be safe i don't like that no i mean i don't disagree with you i'm I'm thinking i'm trying to think of an example of of one that i've seen recently that i feel is safe or in the box i think i'm just drawn to the kind of fringe kind of in terms of comedy like the name name one that's name name a fringe one in the last five years that 
challenge the woke authority. I can't think of one. The woke authority, <laughs> but I, no. But I also, I, I also don't know. I mean, could you? You couldn't make old school in in twenty eighteen. Nobody would produce that. I think I think old school would have been better off than a lot of other ones. Yeah, he slept with his his underage daughter's uh, uh, underage boss's daughter. No, that, there's no that way. Got, that, would, that, that would yeah, that would have got no. Dude, yeah, I don't think that's, that's show show me a movie that did something like that. Not no, a chance. That underage, yeah. Oh. No, she was a high what? school senior. No, no way. Well, was no, she a high school a senior or was she underage? She was. It was her. She was a junior, so she had, she was underage because she's going to her junior prom. Okay. No. Uh, I, yeah. No, you're right. No, they. they, they, they I mean, you could make it, but you'd have to woke it or, or dumb it down. Listen, I'm not against anything woke. To be fair, anybody who listens to this who thinks like, "Oh, Andy's some like anti woke," I'm not. I'm fine with. I'm all gay woke. When I watch a comedy, I don't want it to be well. I'm going to edit that. <laughs> it's going to be I'm gay, and that's it. <laughs> Beautiful. Do what you want. I'm fine with. I'm all gay, but I I want I want the bound. I, that's the idea of comedy and horror and things like that. Like you want to be uncomfortable. I mean, that's what. In the last how many years? I I go like I feel like 2018 to like 2021, oh, like no, get those gonna, five years. I was gonna say bad words, but that was back in 2013. Yeah, but that was still that wasn't too bad. Yo, dude, the way he I don't know bad kid, words the way was he, the way <laughs> yeah, he that, was, that, that was kid, aggressive. That movie's that fucking was aggressive. savage. He goes, dude. Yeah. He he makes the little girl think she had a fucking period by yeah, spreading no, ketchup on the chair. Yeah. Like that movie's fucking that's good. savage. <laughs> that's good. That's that's fair. That's I I I would agree with that. But yeah, like, it's twenty thirteen. That was ten I, years ago. I, I know. I I get what you're saying, but I really can't think of. But see, here's the thing. And in the, I I think, comedy. In and of itself. In terms of films, it has changed because they can be churned out. There have been more. Um, I think very quickly produced romantic comedies like rom-coms have, have been a bigger age. I don't think there have been, and I don't think it's just be, I don't even know if it's been wokeness. There just haven't been that many. Like as many raunchy kind of comedies. comedies. Yeah. Cause anyway. you couldn't make them because nobody would produce them. They're, they're, they're not. Do you think that people just stopped writing comedies like bad words and old school? Okay, no, so because they weren't getting produced. Like we watched White Castle or Harold and Kumar go to White Castle. And I was yes. kind of thinking, I don't know that they would, they couldn't make this now. I don't think. I, t I just, I, so after we were coming off our, uh, uh, our road trip, uh, after Pulp Fiction, I put on White Castle just to kind of like level the mood out. And I was watching White Castle and I totally agree with you. Yeah. Like, I, don't I was know. definitely thinking it was not for, not by today's standards. Yeah, three or four years ago, they wouldn't. That, that would never. Pa that you could have turned Lockers that in. Lockers came like, out yeah. in twenty eighteen. What was? What Lockers, uh, John Cena, and um... oh, the cock blockers. That was pretty good. Yeah, that was good. But but what 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 was? Did they ever push the envelope? I mean, you're a white family trying to protect oh, your no. daughter from no, no, having no, no, sex. No, 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 no it doesn't oh, okay. yeah, that's forget that. forget the forget the but that's the thing forget the subject think about what they do he like he like doesn't he like if i remember correctly doesn't he like fucking anally beer bong mm -hmm. a couple of like yep. he takes an anal beer bong in that movie yeah yeah it, that was it, pretty it, good. like yeah. <laughs> just face <laughs> 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 She's really? like, how does that, what's a, I don't know where to start with that question, mom. What's a beer bong? Maybe I'll start there. <laughs> oh, she's smiling. She knows These what a beer kids know is. everything. <laughs> they, they, they just find it all now. You don't even have yeah. to teach them anything. She's on her phone. She just Googled beer she's bong. Like, she's, she's probably, probably over here. <laughs> she's got an order on Amazon. She has it in your basket. Bad, bad words. Nobody watch tag. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Oh. All right, but it, it took us it took us that long to find a movie that was, you know, well, in a to be fair, I just comment. started looking and I found it in two seconds. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, to, be fair. Take a to be fair, speaking oh, of that, the first the episode asshole. of uh, Letter Kenny came out of the newest second half of the season. <clears throat> I have to admit, I haven't had a chance to watch any of it yet. I'm excited to sit it's, down with it. Uh, it's it just came out. They're doing one episode a week now, so instead of dropping everything at once, they're doing one episode a week. This one, if you love Letter Kenny and you're used to their you know their banter, right, and, and their thick like it sounds weird, but their thick Canadian accents that's hard they're hard to keep up with sometimes. This time they have everybody, and then um, two families come up from New Zealand and Australia. And they keep up with that same pace, but they have super thick accents. It is so oh, hard to catch everything. Shit. It's great. Like it's it's up, really okay. the key that'll that would almost I see now you make me want just want to skip ahead and go and watch that. Just because that like a Kiwi trying to keep up with that pace would almost get musical. Depending dude, it's, on on the voice. Like it is yeah. so hard to follow. Like I was I was blown away. I was like, I don't know what they're doing. I don't know what they're talking about. Like I had to like almost rewatch just to get all the dialogue. It was, I mean, it was hilarious, but it was, it was challenging. Ugh. But it's, it's, it's dope. I, <clears throat> oh, and the only letter that he's, I, ah. <laughs> nice scary. It's a horror movie. <laughs> right. He's, He's about to murder the next person that sits down on that chair. He's the watcher. <laughs> oh, that was a good show. Um, oh, that the only really Letter Kenny I've ever show. watched. Who was in the watcher that we were we looked up? Oh, I don't know her name, but she it was this. Oh, it's the mo- okay in Little Mermaid. Eric has a mom, mom, and it's the girl. It's the lady from the watcher. But the I'm detective. Blanking. The detective lady. From the watcher. Or the, the private investigator. I can't. I have to go back. I don't I'm not prepared back. for her. Sorry. Um, <laughs> we were we like, why is this lady so familiar? And we looked her up and she was the the one from the watcher. Not, I don't know if she was a private investigator or, yeah, who's like the person that got hired. The private investigator. That's yeah, what she was. Yeah, okay, so PI. she she had, so she's the queen in this one. She was also, yes. um, she's been in a bunch of stuff, but she was uh, Mrs. Penny, uh, Mrs. Penny Farthing in Mary Poppins Returns. I don't know if yes. you saw that, if you like that. Right. Those were the two things I knew I had seen. I was a, yeah, like the biggest on this side of the pond. There's a there's a, a butt ton of stuff that, that's probably got a good release in Britain. But <laughs> yeah. That's, a, that's an, an, an accepted... Um, unit of yeah. measurement around the world is a bunch yes, yeah. um it's it's very yeah, funny of you like, that's cool to talk about I, Ubar. <clears throat> so so to, to not to jump subjects but i'm going to and talk strictly about uh kevin's background Fubar. kevin how funny and great was Fubar? <laughs> i do i actually think it's i, I think it's pretty Freaking fantastic. I mean, it's definitely a genre show. Um, but like I said in, in our chat, like I tried to watch Citadel on Prime, and yeah. I think that show is absolute garbage. It's so like I, it, the the acting is is fine, but the whole premise of it is just ridiculous and it takes itself far too seriously for what it's doing. And it just the acting doesn't gets work. worse. Yeah, oh good. The acting gets good. worse. That's that's comforting. What's <laughs> funny is I I did I watched it to the end. I watched the last episode this week, and the last two episodes I watched it with like Fubar in mind, like ha- having seen an episode or two of Fubar when I watched the last two episodes. I'm like, this show would have been so much better if they went that direction. The Russos tried yeah. to make a Marvel movie or a Marvel a Marvel series. And it didn't work. I mean, I'm not kidding you when I said there were there was upside upside down shots, like the spiral shots. There were probably 15 spiral shots per episode. It was like, come on, dude. 
is this your first time making a movie? And I'm like, I know it's not. Like, what are you doing? It was ridiculous. Yeah. But yeah, it, was I almost, it was terrible. But I almost found more, I found it more fun as I watched it because I'm like, this is, this is ridiculous. Do um, you think, let me ask you this. Do you think on some level it's trying to capitalize on the popularity of like a Cobra Kai? No, because it, 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 no. it, Cobra Kai doesn't take itself seriously. This show thinks it's like drama, but the whole no, 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 no. premise of it's ridiculous. Okay, now, granted, I've only I've only watched the first like twenty minutes of the show. Of Citadel? we're talking Citadel? Are we Citadel or Fubar right now? Fubar. No, 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 no. Okay, so Fubar. Oh wait, yeah, no, hold we're on. We're talking hold on. about Citadel. Fubar. Oh, it's never fine. Mind. Citadel. I Citadel citadel thinks it's drama citadel thinks it's a good show is, i'm sorry what is citadel again that's all you need it's to know prime. is that question right there yeah. what is citadel who gives a kiss uh no it's on it's prime it's a spy show priyanka jonas and uh, um manis what's his name i don't know uh, uh, yeah from game eternals. of thrones and the eternals um icarus m- not icarus m- yeah, yeah icarus madsen uh, madsen Anyway, oh, okay, yeah, no. yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew, um, I knew who you were talking about. Yeah, and it's it's a spy show, and like they're supposed to be from like you can tell it's bad when they're fighting an evil corporation called Manticore, right? Like that's so right, right, okay, like right there. I'm like, yeah. oh, okay, we've got a bunch of bad or guys even with their... a stupid name. Yeah, for like, real. They're, they're, no, 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 hold on. Guy base. It was like I'm GI sorry, Joe. I'm... I got. Yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna tangent the shit out of you right now because it's something that I have been watching recently as just like a while I make lunches in the morning, just the way my house is set up. I like. Mm-hmm. I hate watching the news because starting your day with the news is like, just like a ridiculous way to start your terrible day. Terrible idea. Fill your head with all that bullshit before you get going. Um. So I put on something that I can like dip in and out of. I've been watching my morning thing. Has been like the librarians. <laughs> I've been watching that again. If you haven't seen that, it's available to stream on, I think, Prime. I forget what I'm watching. Yeah, it's on something. Yeah. One of them. Um, it's just, it's this goofy, like, Indiana Jonesy kind of, like, you know, Paw of the Golden Monkey serial every week. It's a different thing based on the idea that, like, all the magic of the world, you know, that it's a, magic really exists. And it's all kept in this library, in the New York Public Library. And there's a guy, the librarian, who goes out and finds artifacts and things. There were three movies done for, like, TNT. Yep. They made a series out of it. Um, oh, and this is all, it's got Noah Wiley mm-hmm. in it as the librarian <laughs> first. That's so how you know it's, it's good. Dr. It's, Dr. it's Dr. John Carter, but he actually, he's really good in it for what it is because it's it's on the level of production value of like a Xena or like, you know, it's something like that. Like this is not, it's not a very high production value kind of serialized show. Anyway, I'll watch that in the morning. And you know what? Explaining all that completely drove me off track. I have no idea what I pulled this tangent for. Oh, we were talking about how dumb Citadel is. But like the difference is, is that. Oh, the Manticore but, thing. I said, right. no, that that made me laugh like that because that is some shit that would come out of the librarians. Like that low yeah. level. Like, well, it, where it's actually, like the bad guy is Manticore and it would have been like an acronym for some yeah. shit. Yeah. Well, Andy said it best. I mean, it's it's like a live action G.I. Joe that thinks it's a good show. Like it's it's just it's terrible, but then you take Fubar, and Fubar knows exactly what it is. It is a yeah. '90s action movie drawn out into eight episodes, with, but with like solid comedy. Uh, everybody and it's funny. Arnold's funny. Like it knows that it's not serious. It, it knows it. Like the ridiculous things happen. Uh, in in I think in the first episode. Uh, dude saves the day by hanging from a helicopter and firing a machine gun at a, you know, a crowd full of people, and it's awesome. ridiculous, but it works in the context of the show. So, like, it's not realistic. Most of the things that happen yeah. in it are not realistic, but it's None of it it's, it's on the same order of if you were watching True Lies, like the things that happen in True Lies, not realistic, right? But that movie's a lot of fun. Okay, you know yes. what? They actually that's a show right now no it's not it, they they made the show and nobody watched it and now it's not a show anymore oh really it's already been canceled dude it did I mean, terrible it did it's, it's terrible been, it's been in one of those like I, where i've been scanning through the service and be like oh okay i'll try that and it's like to like to watch and i just never get to it 
because <laughs> I love True Lies. I think that's so do a, I. A, a, the original, the movie? movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's it's, a good movie. That's a good movie. But that's yes. what that's what Foo Bar makes me think of, like that level of, like, removed from realism. But you've got action, you've got comedy, you've got yeah, you know, good characters was, and all that. It was a ton of fun to watch. I watched every episode. I enjoyed it all the whole time. It was just a good time. That that's that's Foo Bar. Like you should watch that again. That's comedy going back in that kind of direction. Arnold, I don't, was Arnold ever in a TV series before ever? No, this is his first that. series ever. This is his first series ever. Uh, but I don't think this is taking a step backwards. Like FUBAR, there's nothing you can't no, watch No, 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 no. I'm saying, no, no, I'm saying step forward. Oh. Like, I, I think this is going back in that direction of comedy. Like, it was, it was, it was a f- fun comedy. It had some, uh, you know, you had some woke things in it, but you had, it was, it challenged the box a couple of times too. It, it was all around a fun show. Like you could watch that with a family and enjoy every episode. Like it was a good show, a hundred percent. Like what, what, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. You could watch that with a kid of any age, right? I, mean, I think so. I, 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 I really do. I, th- I think there's a few, you know, I can't, sexual I can't jokes of- in there. Like, but for yeah, the but most part, it's bad. It's, actually a show that probably could have made it on network television other than the profanity um yes, other than the, the language of the show yeah other than yeah. the the language it's 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 not out of the realm of what could be on um no NBC Even or like ABC the, right now the the uh the romantic scenes were not yeah like, they're not over the top were... at all yeah no and even like Arnold's like love interest was age appropriate. Like every everything mm-hmm. worked. It was just yeah. a good show. Good show. Like everybody should watch Fubar. Like I am on board with Fubar. Hey, what, what do you mean? What do you mean Arnold's love interest was age appropriate? Well, they didn't do something well, stupid <laughs> where because he's like seventy something, right? He, yeah, yeah, he's old as shit. Yeah, and so in in movies right now you have this thing where a dude is you know, a 70, but his girlfriend's like 40 and everybody's like, that's exactly right. You know? No, but she, yeah. she's older. She's very pretty, but she's older. Yeah. Um, And it's, you know, it's, it's a little more realistic than it would be in some, you know, in, in some other films. Um, But they just, they just do a really good job and the relationships really work. Um, But if you watch the trailer, I mean, the trailer is a, an excellent representation of what the show is. Like I, I really think the 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 trailer does not sell you a bill of goods, right? It sh- it sells you exactly exactly the show as it is, and I think what I like too is the trailer. Most of what happens in the trailer is in the first episode, not all of it, but most of it. So it doesn't ruin a lot of the things that happen as the show develops. Um, so it's it's, it's, it's really it, solid. The uh, the other guy who's in it. Uh, what's his name? Yeah, uh, Jay Barshell. Jay Barshell. Jay Barshell. Yeah, Jake Barshell. I haven't seen him in stuff. a while. Yeah, he's been around yeah. for a long time. Okay, no, no. So actually, if you go and take a he look really at good. the time span he's doing stuff, he's been doing a lot of producing, um, and a lot of stuff like that. You're also gonna see though a lot of these guys that have been smaller actors it's gonna feel like that until we're like way removed from covid yeah probably like we're, we're not that far out of covid and that kind of shuts shit down in a well now you got the writer's strike so things are going to be weird again yeah it, it's going to uh, be so it, it's it, a lot of that's going to be very interesting for a while but so i i guess the takeaway from both of you guys is citadel watch it it's awesome fuck fubar right that's what the Yes, yep, that except for Pete, the exact opposite of that. Yes, okay. perfect, Pete. You, I would you, uh, lock lock it down. Oh, if or I wa- watch watch Fubar first, and then watch Citadel through a Fubar lens with your own soundtrack, and it's awesome. Yeah, yeah. You, like, like seriously, if you watch Citadel, you just have to understand that it it's not as good as it thinks it is. Like, it really does think it's like a drama spy show, and it's just. It just oh. doesn't work. Like it just it those doesn't the, work. Those are the Kevin, best. When, Kevin, when we were yeah, no, you're not wrong. I, I couldn't stop watching it, Pete. That was my problem. But, <laughs> but Kevin, best. when you when you were watching Fubar, 
did you ever so i i got like spider-man vibes from that like the, just the kind of the lightness of it and the the dramedy of it like a couple of times i was watching when i i watched on the treadmill the whole time so right my, my focus is kind of on several things <laughs> so I, I was watching enjoying and i got all of it in but a couple of times I'm like listening to like the, the, the sound behind it. And I'm like, I'm waiting for like Peter Parker to pop in. And like, did you get any like Spider-Man by like that kind of lightness to it at all? I mean, lightness. Yeah, I think. Um, but Spider-Man, the feel of Spider-Man is a little different because you're actually talking about teenagers. Mm -hmm. And this is definitely the opposite end of the age spectrum, right? Like Arnold is not a teenager. For sure, um, but like, uh, l l let me say, let, let me let me put it this way: when they're like in the CIA building and they're like having coffee and stuff like that, like I, when I was watching those scenes, sorry, I'm weird, <clears throat> I apologize, but like I I feel like that I could see like Peter Parker like walking into Avengers headquarters and like get a cup of coffee and like, hey guys. What are we doing today? It, it just, it, it just gave, it, it was just, I don't know. I am it's just, such a well, I, in regard to that, like everybody's so like plucky and chipper, except for when they're mad at right. each other. But even when they're mad at each other, it's in a funny way. Like when everybody's yes. bickering, like it just works. And I forget her name. What's, what's the girl's name? Um, not the daughter, but the, um, the other CIA the, agent. The gay girl, I don't remember her name. Yeah, she's a um, she's a really good comedian. I don't remember her name. She's hilarious, like everything she does, and um, she's fantastic. Like, like really, there the thing about it is there's no bad casting. Like everybody is no. really good in their parts. Um, fantastic, and it's it's just it's good. Like it's, it it really is good. Um, yeah, and uh, so we've talked about FUBAR and we like it, but speaking of things that are good or not good, you said you watched Shazam too. Oh God, Jesus Christ. I watched, so I, I watched, personally, <coughs> um, I made it through about the first 20 minutes or so. And then I fell asleep on the couch. That's for the best. Um, yes. Good for you. I <laughs> could see where I could kind of see where it was going. It just didn't like that opening action sequence with the bridge. Like I made it through all that and it was like their second meeting and thing. And like the kid stuff, like it was just like. But I think I, my biggest complaint is not with the acting necessarily, but with the directing. Oh, like, you know, it's, it's I, I don't know who, it's... who didn't pull all of these characters back when they are the adult versions, because every single adult version of the characters is more childish than the kids characters that they're playing and it just yeah. it doesn't work and and they're supposed to at least be the same person if not the adult version right and, and it just doesn't what you're work y yeah like i like um zach levi a lot as an actor like i love chuck i think chuck is a is a great show i you know i really enjoy chuck he had a great Big turn tangled. yeah sure yeah, and uh, he had a great turn in um, Miss Maisel when he was on that. Yes, yes. Like he was really good in that. And then he in in Shazam two. I mean, in Shazam one, he was a you know a little iffy, like, but it was okay. And this one, it was just so over the top. Like everything that they tried to do that was funny with the older characters was just stupid. And then they just Did let you... him go too crazy. Did did Jen? Did you girls see Shazam two yet? No. It just saw, dropped on HBO, so you can try to watch it if you want. I saw the first Shazam when I was too young, so <laughs> I didn't really like it that much. That was a kind of like a whoopsie on Dad's part. I, well, I, I, that that like, was whoa, that got out of control real fast. Yeah, we we scene? talked about that. Yeah. Yeah. There was that one scene in the office. Yep. That, okay. Yep. <laughs> we talk about that exact thing where. It, that movie didn't know if it was for kids or adults, and it goes from like, like jokey stuff to just flat out mass murder there's a, and monsters. There's and like a like, dude in a wheelchair getting hurled out a window <laughs> of a skyscraper. Yeah. You're like, like it, 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 it seriously does go from zero to sixty, like in an insane yeah. way. Like at at that moment, I like my first reaction was like, oh shit, 
Shazam's about to get real. It's like this is about yeah. to just go off the rails, and then it doesn't. And yeah, you're like, and then it well, wait, goes back to being a kids' then? movie. Yeah, it was, and then so this one. So we don't need to watch the second one, is what you're telling us. Not really. Th- this like, one has a moment. It, it takes a lot for me to fall asleep in a movie, even like comfortable at home on the couch, super tired. Like yeah. it takes a lot for me to really fall asleep, and I was kicked. Well, you know the guy that plays um, the the neighbor on um, Office Space that yells out through the wall. He's oh, been around uh, forever as a Dieter Schroeder. What was it? Dieter Schroeder. Dieter Schroeder. Yeah, Dieter, you're right. No, you're right. You're right. You're you're close. He was, he was on Veep. Yeah. No. Um, was he on Veep? Yeah, but he's, he's on. A, he was on an American it, Housewife. He was the husband on American Housewife. Yeah. Oh yeah yeah yeah. 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 yeah De- um, uh, Diedrich but, Bader. Diedrich Bader. There you go. Diedrich um, Bader. That's what yeah, it is. I knew you were I, close. Dude, I love just... that. I love that fucking show. I was so upset when it American got off. Yeah. yeah. Katie Mixon was so fucking. Oh, she's awesome. fantastic. But back to Shazam too. So yeah. there, there's a scene in this movie again where they go too far into the darkness, where they just they possess him and walk him off a building. Like he literally walks off, and you hear him splat on the ground. They don't show it, but like you hear the sound, and I'm, I was like. Uh, what are you doing? And then so again, the rest of the movie isn't like that again. Again, like I said, I'm about 15, 20 minutes in, but there is no sort of vibe that I'm getting from what I've seen in this movie so far that that would happen. No, like, not at, at all. all. It just uh, yeah, so it much of it doesn't work. Um, so I, 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 will, I will say this. I, I did watch the whole movie front to back, top to bottom. I don't think I'll watch it again if, my kid wants to watch it. I'll not going to leave the room. I'll watch it. But it, it it was it was silly, and it was like, yeah, this is why. And if Andrew was here, he would be screaming, you know, putting thumbs up all over the place. But this is why the DC EU failed. <gasps> it, oh. it had it had no it had no foresight into what it was trying to accomplish. It just was making shitty movies. So, but to be fair, hold on. Now I. Two of you at least are going to yell at me about this. It was a horrible movie, but I still liked it. Like I, I didn't. No, I didn't there was nothing good about it. I didn't like it at all. No, no. <laughs> I, I, but I, 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 I don't regret watching it. I mean, I had a couple of like little chuckles. It was like, again, watched on the treadmill. Like I, I didn't, I didn't walk out. I didn't turn it off. I didn't change the channel. So, is is it worth the watch? No, but if you're like, if you, if you're like, oh, Jesus, I can't find anything. Oh, we haven't watched Shazam too. Like, I wouldn't not and watch take a nap. Okay, that bro, un- understand. I've okay. This is this is my only thing. So I will finish it just because I've got to finish it. I'm I reserving judgment this. yet. No, no, no. I, I'm reserving judgment yet, honestly. But mind you, I'm staying awake watching reruns of Franklin and Bash. Be oh, okay. Of and that's impressive. Shazam two put me to sleep, son. Yeah, no, I get you. I'm, I'm, I'm picking up what you're putting down, and I'm not disagreeing saying, with you. Like, if I had put this on at seven o'clock at night when I'm tired after a long day, would I have made it to nine? Probably not. But and mind I, you, I tried to watch it not more than twenty minutes after I came home from Guardians this afternoon you that is an unfair comparison for sure as oh uh, yeah yeah you can't do well, that no, no, you no, can't no, go not as a comparison i'm just saying i was riding my my guardians of the galaxy three high home to then watch that like i should have i, I should have just been able to stay i'm just saying it put me to sleep so i am gonna watch it and finish it and then uh, only only then um will i roast you in group chat for saying that that, that was a good movie um I'll I'll Fair wait until then, um. But yeah, I don't know. Yeah. What if, so uh, the other thing sorry. that was interesting too that 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 falls in line with the dude throwing himself off the building is then in the end credit scene. Um, the a couple of characters from Peacemaker show up, and I'm like, if there's a show that is so far removed from Shazam two as far as its right? audience. It's peacemakers. So why are they like? I was like, your kids can't go from Shazam two to watching Peacemaker. Like, no. absolutely not. Like that show no. is not for, oh. not for kids. Like I was like, dude, what are like? 
What are you doing? It's just barely for adults. But actually, it was great. Yeah. I loved oh, Peacemaker. Peace, Peacemaker was amazing. So, so yeah. we, I mean, we can wax poetic about that one again forever. Um, I don't know. I just feel like Shazam too. Like even from what I'm, what I'm already seeing, is the whole direction the movie's going to take is completely wrong. Like I really feel like this should have been the Black Adam Shazam movie. Yes. Right here is what this should have been. Yep, for um, sure. Because they knew it was going on when they were. I, I don't know, but that's DCU. It's a whole new thing under James Gunn. Um, yeah, I got nothing else to say on that because I'm not going to go down that so, road. So, I, Kevin, I think you covered Game of Thrones. Oh, not Game of Thrones. <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy. Sorry, wrong GOT. Um, l- last week, right? Uh, last week or the week before. But ha- have. No. I, I think you and Andrew just did did a, did a mostly spoiler free. Yeah, we, free. we did a spoiler free. So, I mean, we can do a, a little bit of spoilery stuff if you guys have all seen that. Um, Jen, have you seen it? What was it? Guardians 3. The girls, Guardi- yeah. Guardians 3. We have. Oh, Pete, you've seen it too. No, I haven't seen it yet. Oh, well, I don't care about you. No, you just said what? you saw, you fucker. <laughs> <God. laughs> <laughs> He's such an asshole. He's such a dickhead. God damn it. I love you, Pete, so much. All right. So just real quick, I, I'm, I'm just going to throw this out. I'm going to just toss this over the net and say, and I said this in a group chat, and I, I'll probably get lit up about this. I don't give a shit. Adam Warlock should not have been introduced this way. Adam Warlock is supposed to be a fucking Superman level. Like, I, I don't. I am I am very negative on how he was introduced. I don't like it at all. That is that is not Adam Warlock. And I was expecting Adam Warlock. Like I was totally stoked about it. When I saw him being the comic relief, I was totally bummed out. I don't like it. Not a fan. Thoughts. So, I mean, to be fair. You like Man of Steel when Superman is the exact opposite of how he's supposed to be. Yeah, I'm just saying, like Superman's kind of a dick in Man of Steel, and he kills people, and you know, he, well, he kills. He, one he smiles person. like twice in the entire movie. Like he is the opposite of what Superman's supposed to be, but that's okay. Ah. But okay, then you take out a Warlock in a comedy film and make okay. him comedic. <laughs> yeah. Andy, I, I think I, I honestly I get where you're coming from, but I think I, your issue is actually I think your issue is actually more of the change of who Adam Warlock was rather than how he was introduced. Because you look at every this is it's classic James Gunn. Like if you mm-hmm. look at the voice he uses for men, that was Adam Warlock perfectly. The whole mommy issue thing, like the whole you know he came out of the cocoon too early, so he's still a baby. Like all that bullshit. Like it, I love that. I think it played to it. I, I think he showed his his power when he was mm-hmm. in there, and I think it's only yeah. going to increase. I think we've got you know, like like we saw the preview today for the Marvels. That looks really really fun. Mm-hmm. You know, I think there's like there's a lot that's going to go on with that. That I, I think we're intro- now we're really in a world where we're going to see a lot more of those cosmic powers like that come around especially with what's going on with all the kang stuff um yeah i see i, I, I didn't have it. a i didn't have a problem with adam warlock for a couple reasons and one is that it's an introduction right he can yeah. get so much stronger but we we already saw him be pretty powerful in a first appearance uh for the most part oh, in this one um virtually unbeaten yeah no yeah I, I, and I, so I'm you not know he, he's just level. young um, but the other thing too, is that with him becoming a member of the guardians and not necessarily knowing where the guardians go after this, Adam Warlock could easily never show up again. I like know, they could just eliminate either. the character and call it good. Um, the, the, the infinity, the, sorry, the infinity saga, like was pivotal around, like, I don't want him. Uh, I guess ultimately, I just I want him to be a part of Phase Five and Six because I feel like in the comics he was super important, and to throw away somebody that was that pivotal 
in what I read for years. And I don't like that. Like, I'm okay with a lot of stuff. <coughs> I, I understand we're not following the comments. I get all that shit. But, like, I just don't think you throw away Adam Warlock. I just don't think you do. And I'm I not agree. saying that, I'm not he saying can, they will. Be, I'm just saying they can. Like, no, uh, and I agree with you. And that's the problem. I could see okay. not seeing him again. Traditionally in the comics, the Guardians of the Galaxy was a rotating cast of characters yep. already. Yep. Um, they were also incredibly different than they were. I think this actually bodes incredibly well for Adam Warlock. The Good. the problem the problem is the the Guardians. When you look at the MCU as a whole, where the Guardians plug in is a bridge for several different um character arcs and you know the way that characters become interconnected because of the the way they travel and who they come across and like the you know the circles they run in so the guardians are going to show up again they've already said star lord is going to return that's the post credit which scene. which was actually a surprise for me when i saw that pop up i was like oh okay because yeah, there's so I'm... many of these guys that were so attached to james gunn that these guys were actually done with Marvel when James Gunn got fired. Yeah. We, we hit the first time they were like, cool, we're out, you know, we're, we're good. And when they brought James Gunn back, I think some of that animosity seems to have stuck behind for those actors. Cause I you, know. well, Dave you've Batista lost Gamora, you lost Dave Batista, you lost, um, I think Karen Gillan would come back. Um, and obviously, um, uh, Star Lord's coming back. I, I and I don't see any reason that Bradley Cooper or Vin Diesel wouldn't come back because their work is pretty easy. You know, they're just yeah. they're just voiceover work. Um, so no, that, that's what I'm saying though. That last that last group, I we could see them again mm -hmm. in some capacity. In a although film I don't think we'd see Sean somewhere. Gunn again. Yeah, I think you're right. I think that was. I think honestly, I think we're going to see some of those characters some of those actors show up in some dc movies oh 100 percent, 100 yeah yeah no doubt like that's absolutely i, I have i have a feeling you know almost like there's like like you're gonna find with some of these like there's gonna be a couple of like especially with james gunn i think there's gonna mm -hmm. be a group of guys that are like his guys that work oh, yeah. for him that that he went through like i could see like peacemaker is they, I, I don't think they've said yay or nay on that, and they they were supposedly were already working on a season two. Yeah, yeah, I think I think you know? well, I mean it's his it's his universe now, so I don't see any reason that Peacemaker wouldn't hang around oh, somehow. Okay, Andy, Andrew, there. I mean, Andy, there you go, Peacemaker. What about it? That's a comedy that's out there. Yeah, it's a pretty racy comedy. It is on HBO Max. I mean. It's not mainstream. I, I dig it. Um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm agree. sorry. It, I'm sorry. It's just Max home. now. You're Come right. On. But it, it <laughs> definitely pushed the, it pushed the envelope for sure. I agree. But that's also come from a, 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 who else could it come from? But by an already canceled and uncanceled director like that, nobody else would have been able to to do that. He already had been shot in the head. And then he, he came back to life and he did it again. Like a regular producer couldn't have done that. It had to be somebody like James Gunn to do something like uh, Peacemaker, in my opinion. I'm picking up what you're putting down. I think you guys hate when I make sense. It just happens so rarely we're not prepared. Um... <laughs> you just cringe when you're right. <laughs> you know what you're not prepared for? You're not prepared for your best friend to sleep with your boyfriend of what is it like seven years that's are you about to mind. start are you about to talk years. about vanderpump yep I mean, this is that's my ham-fisted segue so you can go ahead <laughs> <laughs> it'll, honestly it'll be short there's not much to talk about like there's short it's all stuff we already knew but really it's just so that last episode was nutty bananas with Ariana and him, and then in the Raquel. reunion. Oh, okay. I think I told I told my wife and daughter Tom Sandoval looks like a dude that knows he's gonna get his ass whipped, 
and it and he knows he's about to enjoy the worst day of his life for everyone to see like that's like he that's what his face looks like to me like he's just done raquel we haven't really seen her yet because it's not that episode oh i dude it's been crazy they go after tom and i loved it now so the one the one character who like especially kind of like binging the seasons up to this point who i totally was not on board with because I just didn't like her was Lala. Yeah. I go back and forth with her all the time. So this season, for some reason, I was like, no, it like just Lala just kind of like clicked for me. And I was like, oh no, you know what? She just really is that girl who says whatever the shit comes into her head at any right. one moment and says it. But I respect Lala because she will also apologize and mean it to yeah. someone when she's when she's gotten out of pocket but dude she everything she called with sandoval and raquel the whole time it was insane. i know she definitely saw that it was all playing out the thing is about these this crew is that they're all the biggest fucking hypocrites like they all okay not all of them but majority of them have all cheated i get that the severity of it going on now is more extreme but really, they're all just terrible people. <laughs> I know. And I think that's the best part about it. But remember, <laughs> you can still be garbage and achieve something because it's a garbage can, not a garbage can't. <laughs> right? So if they still have their bar. <laughs> like, I need a moment to process that it's a garbage can, Let me think not about a that. garbage can't. <laughs> I need a moment. I need a moment. I need no, a moment. I, I'm just saying that's what these shows like continue kind of in some ways show you because I mean, and it sucks because they're all women because I think a show, a show like this about men would be just as funny in so many ways. Cause it does show the bad side of women and like all the crap that like you look at in your life and you go, Oh my God, it's like, it's still high school with all this bullshit. And that's, that's really what these shows are yeah but did you notice how in the last episode when they when raquel i don't know who she went shopping with but like how she bought a lightning bolt oh yeah 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 yeah. yeah. damn exactly i because i at first i didn't realize that 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 was was like already had one Mm -hmm. right so i at first i was like oh my god that's like that's where he got it from i was like oh wait no it's right here okay Never mind. Yeah. And then I sat and I was like, that's rough. Mm-hmm. She's a little, I feel bad, but she's a little kooky. And I know, I know she's just trying to play a role and that she's looking at life. And I think it's very interesting in the reality, like in the, in the reality stars world, I think we're actually looking right now. The, the people who are in it, especially the younger roles here are kind of the second generation and they've learned that there is kind of a life after this. Like they've looked at the Heidi Montags, <laughs> you know, and like, they've seen that like, okay, I can be batshit crazy for a few years and make a little nest egg and then have a kid like Sheena. I think Sheena's getting close to being done. Yeah. I like felt the-, the one thing I respected about Sheena is that I felt like her conversation with her and Sandoval like was pretty genuine like yeah a lot of times i feel like she's just always acting or whatnot but i felt like she was genuinely like hurt over him and understandably you know but i don't know like i think i think this whole thing is absolutely absurd that's why kevin's cringing and when i see them doing all these ads and things now it's kind of gross to me oh it is i'm like you're you're profiting off your you know heartbreak i don't know i love watching it it's like a a accident i can't look away from but oh yeah it's really gross (laughs) no it is it's it no it's it's it is the same thing with any of them though especially like the the other one that we watch like religiously that's the thing is jersey like the other the other housewives can, can go 
but Jersey. These are but the Jersey shows Shore. that I watch when like I can't find other things to watch. <laughs> I mean, I I have always watched Vanderpump, but it's like I feel like I'm in such a rut with what I'm watching right now. So well, it's, the problem I resort the problem back to the reality crap. Yeah. Um, but we could, yeah, that that could be our Jen and I. The next time we're on together, we can talk about what happens because there's two more episodes. I, I cannot of the believe reunion. there's two more reunions. That's Raquel like awesome hasn't thing. even come out yet. Oh, <laughs> so excited! Oh my gosh. She okay, what else? Is... What else? You want to talk about Dang. something you're excited that's coming out? She wanted to talk about one movie that she decided coming out. What you got? Five Nights at Freddy's movie. Okay. Oh yeah. So now I this, oh, this is perfect. So I'm about yeah I'm about to pepper you with questions. Okay. <laughs> so I I I'm loosely associated with Five Nights at Freddy's. Okay, like, and associated, familiar with, right? I know there's like it, like kind of it's a little basic story shit. So I have an 11 year old who kind of likes scary stuff. Doesn't really like scary stuff. Do you think Five Nights at Freddy's is like appropriate for her to play? Yeah, I've... there isn't there isn't any like blood or gore. Like maybe like mildly, barely. Like okay. it's the only thing the only thing that makes it scary is the fact that it's like scary and I mean it's more like jump scare. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's like okay. jump scare. Okay. Like but like okay. like I feel like the game is for like kids, but like the backstory isn't kind of like that kind of thing. Okay. And that like the backstory is gonna be what the movie's about. I mean, it's not like super, but you know, it's like no, it's, it's a not like game. it's not super horror or gore or what's mm-hmm. the backstory? Just quickly, I can't say the Five Nights at Freddy's story backstory quickly. That okay. would take like hours to explain. <laughs> Bro, if you look up on YouTube, Five Nights at Freddy's lore, there are like three hour long videos. Oh my gosh! Yeah, there, there's a lot to it crazy. for sure. Yeah. Okay. Because Fair it's enough. Five Nights at Freddy's know. isn't one game anymore, right? There's a handful um, of them isn't there well yeah there's like six made by the original creator and then all the oh, ones after that i just geez. pretend like they don't exist <laughs> because because it's not acceptable amongst no i just pretend like the whole story anything that happens after the sixth game because the sixth game had the perfect ending like it was like amazing and then after that like they start they're starting to make more games and they're not by the original creator okay mm-hmm. got it Okay, Five Nights at Freddy's. Then we're gonna go. I, I'm interested to hear your take about this movie because I'm I I know that there's a lot of people who love this game. You know, like my my daughters watched some like videos on YouTube about it, not real long ones because her attention span is, but, um, like I've been tempted to to go with that because she does like playing games. You know, we do our thing on the Switch, but yeah, okay. So I will look at Five I Nights. At Freddy's. It. I don't. I didn't think anything was too bad. It's more just like jump scare. That was what the scary part was. Cool. The only like real like 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 blood slash gore is like at the very end of the fifth game. It's just this part where like your whole screen is covered in red, but that's like it. Oh, that's yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really no, not bad. Like she's watched like no, like one of her favorites. Like I've I've kind of eased her into some of that because she's kind of she's kind of been pulled that direction kind of to the darker side. Like we're not a big horror household. It's just, it, we're just not. Like, I, I've never been a big fan. I don't hate them. It's just not a deal. But there's been some stuff that she's been curious about. Like, one of the ones she really liked that she wanted to see was that M. Night Shyamalan movie, Old. No. <laughs> and, and so there's, oh, some, yeah, there's. No, we haven't yeah. Watched that. That's not um, really horror. No, it's not. Yeah. But it's, it's no, I'm just saying with the gore, with the interest. level of stuff. Yeah, but like, oh, I didn't and, think and there was that much gore in there either, though. Really, there's not. But when that came out, and when we watched it, and when I was like, okay, I'm gonna be a good or bad par- parent here on this one. Um, it we talked. I we I know we talked about this on the show. Yeah. Before we definitely Did talked you watch about Stranger this. Things. Yes. Well, at least okay. the last two seasons. We haven't gone back to watch the first. So, so I'm not. Yeah, I'm not worried about like what she's watched. Like honestly. There are because she covers her eyes. Okay, no, but like we'll watch like the Chicago Med. Like I was saying, we watch the Chicago Med and the, like all those goofy fire shows. There's always like open heart surgery or like somebody's gut open, and she'll watch that. Like honestly, there's stuff in. I think there's only twice in Cocaine Bear that it would have had her close her eyes. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. Kind of there is no comparison like... to Cocaine Bear to Five Nights at Freddy's. Well, to be, way to be fair, it does depend on who makes the film and what they try and do with it. Like you could you could put the things in in the film that you don't see in the games depending on who's actually making the film right well, okay the thing is the company that's making it is blumhouse and that's why i'm oh. a little worried because oh. that's the same company that made megan <laughs> this yeah yeah they house, make blumhouse is a horror yeah blumhouse either makes really good films or like really bad ones and like people have been waiting for this like for this movie for like like mm-hmm. over like eight years some people and then like people just have really high expectations for it yeah that's that's interesting i didn't realize it was Bloomhouse. that actually that legitimately <laughs> makes a difference yeah, yeah. And so it could like, easily not be for kids no exactly it's like if, if it had said like five nights at freddy directed and produced by eli <laughs> roth you'd be like whoa <laughs> like, <laughs> like, like what's going on here Quentin Tarantino. That's true. Yeah, that's a good point. But like but the watch- game is fine. I know the game. Yeah, is fine. for sure. Okay. But um, um, watching the like the teaser, there was just some parts that I was just like, um, that kind of like made me not as like excited. Yeah, just the, like I'm scared they're going to change the story too much because the story is what like makes people love the game because it's like a okay. really like. It's really confusing and long, but once you get it, it's really, like, really good. Um, and, yeah, again, I'm just scared. Because, like, watching the trailer, there's this one character that, like, I'm not going to spoil it. But, like, there's this one character that's alive, and in the game, they're supposed to be not alive. And that, like, like it, I know it doesn't sound like it changed that much, but it actually changes, like, like a bunch of the plot. Like the fact that this one character is alive, um, it it changes like the rest of the story. <laughs> I know it sounds kind of silly, but no, that... no, 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 it doesn't. I I literally while you were talking about that, I was listening to you, but I was watching the teaser trailer to oh. get the visual that you were talking about. So I could see. So my take on what that game is about, or what it is like, so far off, and I'm gonna enjoy playing this with my daughter. Just watching, just just from the teaser show, I'm like, okay, this looks like it's gonna be a little more interesting than I thought it would be. Like the um, thing, the the backstory is like, um, I forgot what I was gonna say. That Sorry. happens a lot. Welcome, <laughs> welcome to the show. We yeah, do, we do yeah. that all the time. Yeah, you have a point. You have a point in your head that you were going to make, and you start talking about something else. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. The the backstory, like you can't, you you literally do not know it. Like with like, you can't tell what it is when you're playing the game. You the only way people have figured it out, it's like very hard to find Easter eggs, and uh, okay. honestly, like like really really tiny details, or like you have to do some like crazy thing to like get the secret mini game. And like that's the only like way you can like find them. So like playing the game, you, you probably miss like half the stuff there is. So this game was also correct me if I'm wrong, Kevin. You you might know a lot about this. Five Nights at Freddy's when it came out was also kind of a little bit of a genre defining game. Like it was a big deal because it was very different than the other games that were out at the time. Almost, almost on the level where, like, when Mist first mm-hmm. came out, like that yeah. kind of thing. Like, yeah, and it was, um, it became kind of a phenomenon because it's not like if you play, especially the original, like quality wise, it's not going to blow your mind. It's no. not a beautiful game. The graphics aren't incredible. Even the most recent ones don't look super awesome. Right. It's not about that. It it really is about it's about the jump scares and about the uh, about what's going on. And you just kind of trying to survive the night is yeah. is is the gist of the yeah, game. Kind of like timed. And when I played it, I was like, what the fuck is this? Like the well, very okay. first I I first introduced my mom. I first had her play Sister Location, which is um the the fifth game, I believe. Um and then that one is like very different than the other ones because the other ones you're like on the security camera and like flipping mm-hmm. the camera and stuff. But sister location is more like interactive 
and the first night was super easy so she was like what is this and then we got to the second night <laughs> then it and got, it got to, way harder yeah. and then it was like whoa okay then i couldn't get i started not being able to get past it but <laughs> all right this, I, i'm definitely gonna I, I, I'm gonna let this one hit my radar. Yeah. Also, okay, this is something that I've seen so many people complain about. It's very controversial. The fact that the animatronics have red eyes instead of black with a tiny like white dot in the middle. It's because people think it just looks too like cliche and like just like yeah, like cliche and stuff. Um, and it's not accurate to the lore and stuff, but also, some people say are saying it is, and it, like people are just arguing about it, and they're like, "Oh, you guys are gonna have to make us wait like another couple months, <laughs> like if they're gonna change the eyes." No oh, man, yo, it's like, there is they're not a gonna fandom do that. for everything. Yeah, there is, yeah, oh, yeah. well, this is well, the FNAF the fandom the is video. like, it's like a super big fandom. There's yep. a lot of people in it. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> that is awesome. But well, I'm we're excited, and I'm, I'm excited. It's coming out in October, right? Yeah, yep, I'm October twenty seventh. Loving that it's in October. I have a, all all of it engraved into my brain. I'm a huge fan. <laughs> it is well, you know what? That means it's going to come out um, Halloween weekend. Yes, mm -hmm. I know. Yep. I love Basically. that. Yeah, I, I you know I'm like I don't like this these scary things coming out I'm like Christmas or <laughs> like I love when it's like right around Halloween. Well, That's like the best. I, <laughs> I think that's cool. I think though, there's just if you just look at the amount that Kevin and Andrew have been talking about it on the show, and you've had like your horror class, and so you've been watching more of it. I think there's also in the last, let's go, let's even say ten years, maybe a little less, seven years. There's been more and more horror produced than almost. I don't want to say almost anything else, because you can like the effects and what you can do and what you really need to do a horror movie and it's oh i mean it's kind of always been that way but i think there's been like a resurgence of like when we had the friday the 13th and the freddies and things like that now we've got like the annabelles and the possessions and the you know the awakening or the there's there's or there's the, the possessionator well, even I, well, there's the new one coming out too uh, it was in the oh shit. Uh, who, who? Sorry, Pete. I, I apologize. I don't mean to. No, derail no. Go you ahead. I, your... I'm, I'm. You didn't. You didn't at all. But it I was a. Uh, it, it was in um, the preview for the machine. Who's the actor? Uh, I gotta go conjuring. Um, the the male lead in the conjuring. What's his name? God damn it. Luke, Patrick. Luke, uh, Patrick Wilson. Patrick Wilson. Yep. 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 He's in a new, another new horror movie coming out, uh, and it looks super good. Let me. Pull on, I'm on, I'm, that's that's this kid's that's, actually a horror class dropout. No. Yeah, it's no, no, it's the, it's the next Insidious dropout. Oh, yeah, Insidious: okay. The Red Door. I haven't watched any of the Insidious movies. I don't think. Oh, you should do that. Yeah, I've heard they're good. That. Yeah, they're they're pretty. Uh, they are not for children. <laughs> they're scary for sure. Mm -hmm. But Which he's is, in. Uh, he did the one also where it was about the the kids and the videotapes and all that weird stuff. No, um, that was Ethan Hawk. Was it? Yeah, that's. Uh, not uh, that's uh it's sinister that's sinister, sinister that's yeah Hawk. yeah okay okay even yeah even Hawk was the first one the first sinister but yeah the, which was good until they showed the monster at the end that really pissed me off that was stupid yeah it was r ridiculous um, but insidious was pretty epic yeah and, i've heard uh, really good things about I, insidious i've never watched it the preview um, for the insidious 3 i was like whoa it was a lot so uh, w w worth watching for sure. Sorry, I totally derailed Pete, and then I dropped it into a Patrick Wilson hole about Insidious and Conjure and everything else. My bad. I don't know. I forgot what we were <laughs> talking about. No, I just I was thinking another one. I saw the trailer. For, we didn't see the trailer tonight, but we saw the trailer for it that I'm looking forward to this summer. That Soph and Which I is? are both really geeking out on. 
Dude, the new Ninja Turtles movie. I was that about actually to say, looks what? fun. That actually looks fun. It looks so I good. I didn't see it. it. It's animated. Um, tons they, of actors. Tons of voice actors in it. Seth Seth Rogen is producing and writing it. And like they like they had me honestly this sounds so bad even if the movie kind of sucks they had me with the trailer they're using can i kick it by tribe called quest you got like Ooh. like it says it it bumps right in with it's for, for the eternal teenage mind of seth rogan the voice work it looks like for the turtles is great the animation is cool it's new it looks like it could be something out of one of the spider verses yep. different universes like it, it kind of like has like that claymation in a way or something it does but it's not it's like it's like regular 2d animation huh. with shane like it, it it looks so cool the humor is spot on it is aimed at kids like yeah, Seth Rogen is doing a kids movie and they're and younger I, it's a younger iteration of the turtles too yes it is but i think there's going to be enough just because it's a turtles movie that it's it's going to play very well for a wide spectrum. And I think mm -hmm. it's going to be really, really fun. And I am so looking forward That's to seeing that That's a good cast. Oh, yes. Paul Rudd? Yeah. Go fuck yourself. There's so many people. <laughs> oh, my alone. goodness gracious. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> oh, like, there's a, it my. looks really, really good. The animation. Like, go watch that trailer when we're Actually, done. It's so worth watching. Speaking of Seth Rogen, that's the other thing that I started watching this week since since we're there. I wanted I'm to good, watch that. I know what you're going to say. I It's called Platonic with him and yeah. Rose Byrne. I didn't realize it was a series. I thought it was a movie. I thought it's the a same. series. Um, I don't love it yet. Uh, I expected more from it. And it's it really just kind of drags. It actually feels like a show that should have been a movie. Um, cause each episode is only 30 minutes. So it's a comedy, right? And, and it runs in that 30 minute lock. And the first two episodes just felt like they had a bunch of filler and stuff that wasn't as good as I kind of really expected it to be. Um, I haven't gone and watched the third episode yet, but I, I don't know. I'm, I'm really curious to see if, if you guys watch it and what you think, but I it, go, I'm going to, I, I, yeah. I loved the two of them together so do yeah, I. I, I so do I. they like uh, they looked great it could be a very slow burn he's like that with me sometimes where yeah. Seth Rogen, i don't I, I don't always know but like i loved him in um like sausage fest was what it was but with oh, um, so good the thing that he just did a couple of years ago um with what's her bucket not just his voice and not like a little spot thing that he did in like Pam and Tommy. It was with um uh what's her face? The South African girl. Super hot. Um oh my god, my brain is Charlize so Theron? Right. Yes, him and Charlize Theron. He's like her friend from oh, back in the past. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's like the oh yes. Day. Like, yo, that movie was hilarious with the two of oh, them. Wow. Like he he can work this like man woman energy if you get like the right frenetic woman which him and rose Byrne, if you remember him from the the um or from neighbors like that like they work yeah, very they well don't, they don't have that in this that's that was the thing is really? like yeah it, the um, energy is really weird they have like moments but it just i don't know I, i'm waiting for it to become that thing and it hasn't in the first two episodes so it, it's it's interesting. I mean, I know they're trying to do something with their relationship, right? Like, it it the idea behind it is that they will not hook up, right? Like that's your yeah your your baseline for it. Um, and it's cool. I mean, they they play the friends thing just fine. It just I don't know doesn't quite work. At least not yet. I I I think for the hour long that it is, it could have been fifteen minutes and would have been more interesting you know so I, i'm I'll, I'll probably go back and watch some more of it this week but it it so far for me could have been better yeah i'm, de I'm definitely gonna wind up watching that other than that i haven't watched oh the other the one other thing that i watched i don't know if you if everybody watched it but it was the mother on netflix with um jennifer lopez i want to that was but to uh, on the list that was much better than i thought i was gonna be yeah i yeah. keep hearing yeah, I, I I I agree. I don't don't think it was necessarily great, and it's not even necessarily yeah. her best performance. 
but it was solid you know the the story was there there's some there's some good emotion behind it with the the whole premise of it being that you know she gave up this child at birth so she while she's been kind of keeping an eye on her from behind the scenes for 12 years or whatever it is um she's not been involved so when she has to get involved in this girl's life there's emotions on both sides that neither one of them really knows they're dealing with and and, and they both play it pretty well the girl does a really good job um and and i it was it was a solid movie the action was action movie-ish and you know a, a hair um unbelievable as, as action movies can often do but but it worked yeah it was fun the mother was for sure it was a it was a good show it you know it was a quick watch it was an easy watch it's it's mm -hmm. one of those movies that yeah like yeah put put it on it's it's a you're not going to be disappointed but if you also miss five minutes of it you're also not going to be lost in what you missed yeah it, it was it was to, okay so to go back to where i started like that that was a good movie it's a good movie yeah, it's an okay movie you know it, it, it's it's entertaining <laughs> like can't like, even get him to say good movie he he D jen didn't he like lead off saying it was a good movie but now it's like I said eh, it's better okay than I thought movie. it would be. It's an okay. Yeah, it's it's a good a, movie. There's a lot. There's a lot of. Need to go make their good movie list after sorry, this. Sorry, so homework. Exactly. We we need to come up. I I I'm sorry to interject. I was just thinking about some trailers that I went through the other night. That I think um, you should take a look at. That this some stuff coming out this summer. The Last Voyage of the Demeter. That's the the Dracula one, right? The Dracula one, yeah. That looks pretty good. It looks, uh, it's got a kid in it that looks like she looks like she's going to be a talented little actor. Um, what was the other one I saw that looked? The oh, creator. The creator looks very interesting. Like yeah, I don't, I, I don't know. Like I, I'm, I'm interested in it because we haven't had a good sci-fi movie like that in a while. Yeah. So I'm like, great okay, cast too. Interesting. Yeah. Um, coming out um in December, the color purple, the musical. Oh, Jesus um, it, with Fantasia, uh, Taraji P. Henson. No, dude, it looks really good. It's the adaption of the Broadway production of it. It like, I didn't even know they were making it. If you watch the trailer, the shit looks phenomenal. Like, it looks really, really good. If I mean, if you like the color purple, I like the color purple. I thought it was a great movie. Um, and if it's if it's based on the Broadway show, then I think that's a that's a positive. Excuse oh. me. That was the trailer we saw tonight that bent my mind. I hadn't watched a trailer for it yet. And so I was not interested in seeing it. I can't believe I'm about to admit that when I tell you what it was. Kid, I have got to see Oppenheimer in the theater. Oh, yeah, yeah. I saw, I saw a recent trailer for I mean, that. Oh, yeah. my God. That's probably going to be a good movie. <laughs> wow. Like, that is like, I watched that trailer and I was like, okay, we'll just give them all the fucking Oscars. Yeah, like that's what that like. <laughs> yeah, like done. It's like yeah, a watching yeah, The I, Last of Us with the Emmys. You're just like, cool. This is this is what's going to win. Um, yeah, it, it just it it like there's nothing about that movie that screams. It's it's going to make back its entire budget and then some. Um, both here and abroad. Yeah, I have a feeling. I think that movie is going to do very well overseas. I'm very interested to see it. Um, the cast. The cast is unreal. And you know that they didn't use special effects for the explosion, right? Like they no. they actually yeah. blew something up to yeah. get the explosion. They, they, they did a the, the, the biggest non-nuclear uh explosion ever um in the movies. Yeah. I forget I forget what bomb they bought, but it was like it was a ridiculous amount of money they had to pay for this explosion to happen. But yeah, it's 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 uh it's an it's actual explosion take. yeah yeah they oh. didn't have a second there was no backup <laughs> yeah you yeah yeah the yeah. Yeah. budgetarily yeah. speaking it really and, and, yeah. yeah yeah so that's pretty the wild too were accurate yeah yeah uh, i'm super well, excited to see that this was the other one and i have a feeling this is probably going to fall into the um uh andy's gonna enjoy it 
and call it a good movie. And we're going to be back here debating again whether Gran Turismo is a good no. movie or not. Really? Did you see the trailer for it? I, I did. No, no, no. Did you see the trailer for it? No, no, no. Go watch the trailer not. for it. It's based on a true story. Mm-hmm. Do you know? I do you know the story behind it? Now I can't remember what it was. No, no like, it's based honestly, on true story because honestly, it's dude, about it's about people that started playing the game and then got it's into all happened in Europe. Actual, yeah, and then got into actual racing. What? It, it's, the, no, there's the imagery no. in there. Red Bull, I believe, if I believe correctly, Red Bull sponsored it. They yep. took the best Gran Turismo racers from around the world that did this whole online thing. I forget what version of Gran Turismo it was. Yep. Red Bull sponsored a thing. Well, they realized like auto racing i don't know if people realize this is an incredibly physically demanding sport you see these guys and they drive for five hours and you think that that's like okay well that is what it is no it's incredibly hard to maintain a a car at that speed doing those things for that long like it's it's physically dominating so you've got these kids that are friggin like you know like behind the the console or behind the screen we're awesome video gamers but we you know we can drive obviously and he like whips them into shape and so it's you look at it like like it the racing in it looks like it's done pretty well you know i'm watching the preview right now like i put that on my list i thought i think it looks good because i saw it on the preview in the movie and i always like type in what ones i want to watch i I do and that was on my list because i think it looks good plus it has uh david harbour Yes, David Harbour is the crusty old oh, guy that whips yeah. the kids into shape. I really Orlando oh, Bloom. I love David Harbour. Which yeah, he's seen him Orlando in a Bloom. while. He he's the bad guy. Mm. He's gonna be the bad guy. I guarantee it. I mean, because I mean, the stories. It's gonna be. I that looks like it's gonna be a good movie. I I, I was surprised. Well, I don't know a good movie, but it looks like it's gonna be. <laughs> It'll be a fun movie. Um, a fun movie. I'm, I'm, yeah. t- you guys are all fucked with now with the fun, the good movie I thing. I know. Now we got to really define that. Yeah. God. For ourselves. You know, uh, you know what though. You know what though is not a good movie. It's Green Lantern. <laughs> I'll go yeah, dude. Bro. You know, uh, you know what? I'm I'm watching the trailer for this movie right now, and all I'm waiting for is the Formula One cars to turn into Transformers. Like I feel like this is just gonna turn into a transfer movie at any moment. Well, the, the, yeah. Thing, yeah. Okay. the thing about it is, this is it's not gonna be ridiculous. It's not gonna be over the top, right? Like it's. <laughs> yeah, no, it's a, it's a, yeah, totally. It's that's not gonna happen at all. It looks good though. Fair enough. I'm not I'm not listening to it. I'm just watching it, but it, it looks fine. So there's another trailer that's out also that looks really good and this is this one doesn't come out until end december september september 8th it's it's kind of tune it off there what is it um my big fat greek wedding three oh we'll fuck yourself (laughs) we need to end the podcast if we're talking about that now now legit i will say this that 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 series of movies holds a very special place in my heart because we actually watched that um on, for the first time on the plane to our honeymoon in Hawaii with like a plane full of people <coughs> who were headed on their honeymoon or on vacation. So people were like applauding this movie on the plane. It's a fun movie for what it is. The second one kind of repeats that formula. This one looks kind of cute. The entire crew were going overseas back to Greece because dad's dead. And we're gonna go find dad's best <laughs> friends. It looks G as fuck. They got back the entire cast. The girl who plays her daughter has gr- from the second one. If any of you have seen it, I don't know if you have. Has grown up so much. It's the same actress. Anyway, that one's coming out. That I'm looking forward to. That's a that's a, a family one for us. Oh yeah, there's another fucking Mission Impossible movie coming out for some reason. Oh, I cannot wait for that. That looks amazing. It's a part one. It's a two part. I cannot wait. Great. That looks amazing. Great. You guys don't I, like the Mission Impossible movies? I don't <laughs> care about the Mission Impossible movie. Like, I'll see them if they're on and they're fine, but, like, it's not a movie I'm lining up to go see. Oh, they are good. I'm, I'm sorry. I, it's you not guys, on Kevin's I, good movie list. Yeah. It's on, it, it's it, on my that, fine movie list. Like, they, to be fair, like, that, that franchise hasn't really, like, cratered like some longer-term franchises have. 
they're but they're all about the same quality level and about the same film every single time uh, like i can only well, watch i can only watch that same idea of a story so many times in a row before i'm just like oh yeah that's why they stopped making you know. james bond after number three um i i will say the, the mission of Possible movies i think you're right they are about the same thing every time but that's the move i mean that's what they yeah. are they're they're a mission impossible movie i will say that if you were to compare the first mission impossible to the current mission impossible i think they have dramatically gotten better well that's because tom's got more insane he'll just jump out anything now i mean you're not wrong but they're they're much better and i, I i'm from what i've everything i've read about the mission impossible coming out and it's sequel. I mean, they're supposed to be pretty amazing, like epic, epic so, movies. Le- legitimately, I haven't watched a Mr. Impossible movie past the third one. Are you just... shitting me, P? Yeah, no, I've I only haven't. watched one I'm, I'm, random oh, one in the middle, but I, I just haven't. I just each time so one of good. Them comes out, I'm amazed, just like the 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 um Fast and the Furious movies, that they're making another one. That's another one that every look. Every time I watch the trailer for one, I think they look amazing. Okay. I like the first couple of Mission Impossible. I like the first couple of uh, Fast and the Furious. I actually, I really like Tokyo Drift. I think it's a, it's a fun little movie for what it was. Um, I, I don't know. I just never went back to it. It's kind of like the Jason Bourne movies. Like I really enjoyed mm-hmm. like the first two, but I never went back and watched the subsequent seven or however many it is at this point it's like there just seemed to be like it hit that point where we were like four films in and i was like fuck look i love the entire cast of every single one of them i love fucking simon Pegg, you know and good on him for fucking signing on with tom cruise he's got a paycheck for the rest of his life yeah like i i think that's all right so like i i got i have i have nothing no no hold on i have nothing against those movies what i'm saying is i haven't heard good or bad enough from anyone to make me want to seek them out and watch them as in like their movies in that genre that i have to watch jen have you seen any of the mission impossible movies preferably the more current ones i think i've seen maybe the first one and i Uh, tom cruise was hanging by the fucking ropes in the thing i think Mm. i mean that was how long ago i think that was the only one I've yeah. seen. We we were in our thirties, barely then. When the first Andrew, mission? No, no. When the first son, mission was that was like the late nineties, kid. Yeah, dude, that was a long time the ago. The first mission we impossible. That's that's what. Wow. Yeah, barely, easily. barely. Yeah, no. We're, Kevin, you might have been because you you got a couple on us. No, no, we're all the same age. Are, we're all. Oh, are we? Yeah. I was. We're I all the same. Not class of ninety five, buddy. That's right. Hold on. When did this first one come Mission out? Mission Impossible. 96? 1996. kid. So we were 19 years old. <laughs> oh, my Damn. God. Jeez. Okay, well, now I don't feel so bad for not even being able to remember anything but, about you, it. But, okay, but no, no, no. Think about that. That's what I'm saying. That's 30 years of fucking movies. Yeah. <laughs> okay? I have, I have, like, I watched the first two, and like I said, I'm not opposed to those movies. Like I, if, if some, like Andy, if you honestly, if you say they're enjoyable, if I still like the first couple of movies, maybe I'll go and check them out then and take a look because I you don't. Should. Like, like I said, thirty fucking years. There's like, I mean, Mission Impossible, whatever the fuck this one is. It's like the thirteenth or fourteenth movie, I think. No, it's not that many. It's I, seventh, I, I, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's it's six, it's six or seven. I, this is what I'll say. If you like the current version of the Daniel Craig 007 movies, haven't then watched you will any of like... those. You're lying. Haven't watched any of those. Are you and the, shitting And me? Quantum of Solace is widely regarded as one of the worst James Bond movies made because haven't of the writer's strike and the things that happened with it, yeah. Any of those. I will say they made... I, they, have, they have some mistakes in there, but... Oh, Matt, I don't even have you. Just you, you pulled the, I, you just pulled the trap door. Like I got, now I have nothing to stand on. I will. I, this is the best way I could explain it. The most recent James Bond movies have been more 
um, real and less James Sean Connery. That's fair. They, those were the, corny ass movies. Exactly. The, the most recent James Bond movies goes in a, a different direction, especially like Skyfall. Really fantastic movie. I I feel like they made a terrible mistake in that movie. But regardless of that, it, that movie and subsequent were, were good movies. Now, the Mission Impossible movies, I feel like are in that that same kind of direction where they're they're more real, they're more gritty, they're more like believable. Again, and this is coming from somebody who counts bullets when they get shot out of a gun. So it's more like, okay, I can maybe see this as accurate. Yeah, I just um, see Mission Impossible it, as the more realistic Fast and the Furious. Like they just made so many of them and yeah. they just keep adding people. Yep. Yep. And it's just you're, like, you're, you're, I'm like yeah, okay. You're, you're not wrong. You're not wrong, but it, they're they're good to watch. I would I would recommend that should be I mean, I, I honestly feel like 007, like that you should have to watch that too. Like if 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 we're people talking about movies and we haven't seen 007 movies. Like I've seen every 007 movie ever made. Like you should see that. Oh no, I've you heard great things that, about dude. them. I, I've heard I've I've heard people love them. I just it sounds really bad. I don't know why. I just James Bond held nothing for me during that time period when those movies were coming out. Yeah, it, it just oh my wasn't God. my cup of tea at that point. I think when a lot of those were coming out though was also when my kids were really young. So like the mm-hmm. time and, and my ability to go see movies in the theater changed dramatically. Like if I look sure. back at, at like when, when all those were coming out, um, although I do know, I do, know, I mean, they were younger, but we, I do know that there were some that came out well, oh, well, 10 years ago. Yeah. No. Yeah. Cause we talked, I mean, no, we talked about them on plan B. Mm-hmm. Like the, you know, like in in. Well, Skyfall was a long time ago. Yeah, as I'm saying, Casino was Royale was even further back than that. No, Sk- Sun Skyfall. Skyfall was like Skyfall was like ten like years ago. No, Casino Royale no was 2006. Kiddo, oh, fuck you. I don't think Kiddo. you know your years. Skyfall was yeah, 2012, Andy. so it's been over ten years. No. since Skyfall. Yeah, yes. bro. That was eleven <laughs> years ago, son. Holy yeah. shit, that was eleven yeah. years ago. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Like oh. I, like I had a five year old at that point. The movies I was able to go out to the theater to see, or you know, that I was going to see in the theater, that wow. was not the kind that it was. I think I, and you know, you may not have experienced this, but for me, a, like there is a, I don't want to say a gap, but there's a gap in kind of both movies and television to some degree of what I got into. Oh, like, for sure. When my kids were first. Young, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that I only kept up with the existing things that I was always on. A million mm-hmm. percent. Um, a million percent. Y- you know, a million that, percent. But uh, you know, so I'll try the Mission Impossible movies. Do I, it. You know, like it's I, worth it. I like Tom Cruise. Like I said, I think I think Maverick was oh, possibly the best movie released last year. Maverick was great in the yeah, theater. I would, I would agree with that hundred percent. I fucking loved What's that better? movie. Um, oh, I saw the trailer for the second for <laughs> Dune Part Two. That looks very artsy. You know what though? The first movie was kind of artsy. Oh, it was very. I think we talked about this with Leah. No, Sarah. Leah. Sarah. 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 Yeah, we talked about with Sarah because she's a big Dune fan, and, and when she when she was on, and um, if you like Dune, then I think you can settle in for it. It's definitely. It's definitely going to be long and slow and artsy and Dune because Dune is too big it of a story. Long and yeah. slow and artsy and fucking massive. Yeah, no, yeah. I, I, I'm appreciating it. I, but I'm also you're also coming from someone who actually has liked every different iteration of Dune that has come out for some reason. I, I'm liking this one so far because they're actually taking the time to. Sp- to spread it out and because they're doing it as a feature film it does have a massive budget Mm -hmm. right like i enjoyed the first one with colin mclaughlin i thought they tried to do too much with it they adapted down you know 1200 pages of source material into a two-hour movie and there's there's just so much that happens that is integral that it's like you weren't going to be able to cut it 
enough. It's like it's like right now, like they just announced the second season of uh, Eye of the World. It's the Wheel of Time. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, I didn't. I don't watch that. I was thinking something yeah. else. It it if you've never read any of the books, is the thing. Anyway, I'm gonna get way out of here. Dune. There's just so much material, and the way Frank Herbert writes and describes everything. Anyway, like the one from the '80s was very much its thing. And it was very much the style and the time and everything else. And it was, it actually was a really cool movie. If you'd never read the book, it was awesome. It's kind of like a standalone sci-fi kind of thing. Then the next, I think there's been one other version somewhere that I watched part of, and it was kind of garbage. So I turned it off, but there was this, the sci-fi network did a, um, like I think three episode mini series on Dune. That was obviously very much, you know, made for TV movie budget wise. It was not bad. There was enough CGI that it looked good. The acting was okay. It wasn't bad, it, but it attempted at least to tell the story um, completely, if you will, or as, with as much as possible, right? I like that they're taking as much time as they are with this. This is a movie I will actually probably try and see in IMAX because if we're following the story well, I think this movie is going to look dope as shit on a screen that big because we're going to get a lot of stuff out in the desert with the next movie, like way more than we did in the first one. Um, A lot more with the worms. And I love the IMAX screen for that big stuff like that. Yeah, it's gonna uh, it's gonna be super pretty. I just think with Dune, I think Dune is made for people that already know Dune. Yeah, yeah. No, okay. No, this was the first time I remember this as a kid because my dad wouldn't let me see Dune in the theater. I forgot how old I was, but this is a very salient memory I have in my brain. I forgot what else we went and saw, but it was like Dune's opening weekend. And you know, with the internet, I could probably look this the fuck up. And I can tell you what movie it was that my dad and I saw. But on Dune's opening weekend, they were handing out a sheet of paper, like on cardstock, that explained what Dune was. Because I remember I got one of those those like pieces of paper and I read it. And then I remember it was a few years later we were living out here in California and my parents had some friends uh, from my dad's work and we would go over to their house, but they were like an older British couple and they didn't have kids. So I was always like the only kid other than my little brother. He's a pain in the ass. Um, but I went and, and like, they like talked to adult things at the table, but these people were Brits and they were into sci-fi. So they had like the entire Dune series like kicked out. So I would sit there while my parents were having these like three hour dinners with their friends you know as adults do like we do now and our kids have to run off and fuck off for you know however long um but like i started reading dune dune is a tome like dune is yeah it was it's realistically it was something that was never meant to be made into a visual um medium it's just it's so difficult to do and the things that uh, things that they did in the last one were great. They worked really well, but at the same time, it it's a little boring. <coughs> yeah, you know, it, they, it has its action scenes and it has the things that work, but there's so much story in it that is boring that you're like, cool, let's let's move it along, kids. You know, like, and, but at the same time, that. you have to know it. And that's no exactly that's what's keeping with that like i don't want to say fan service you know in some ways i look at that and i go okay so this movie is made right now for the fans mm-hmm. the dune people like yeah. they know it's going to have a wider audience because it's going to be a big summer epic blockbustery kind of movie right that's and they know it's going to but this is a movie that's like made for the fans of of dune and it's like that's what it feels like to me based on based on you know the dune novels that i've read that this is like that really big attempt to actually give the people who love dune their dune movie yeah um i I, i'm excited for it 
honestly, I didn't I didn't get to see the first one in um the theater because of COVID. I remember it came out. It was one of the first things on Max. Did Andy just go bye bye? He did. Yeah, no, I I I'm I'm looking forward to Dune. Yeah, I, I'm I'll watch it when it streams. I'm actually the opposite. I have no intention of seeing it in the theater. Um uh, because so yeah, I yeah. it's just too fucking long to see in the theater. It's gonna be like three, three and a half hours long. Yeah, it um, is. And uh it's just it it's really a movie that or a story that's meant to be split up into a bunch of things if you're gonna do it into a movie. Like oh. a mini series would have been better. Dune um, should have been but, Dune Dune should have been serialized. Mm-hmm. hundred percent. Well, I think we've exhausted every topic on the planet. Um, <laughs> There's a so. lot of variety tonight. Yeah, I'm going to have so much editing to do. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> yeah. There's going to be like three minutes of Andy left in this thing when I'm done with it. But, uh... <laughs> but, uh, so, with that, I will say, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for, uh, uh, watching. I don't know what else you could say. Um, but uh, we had a good time we talked about way too much and uh, hopefully we'll see you guys next week deuces magooses talk about botox if you want to is that less fruity no it is absolutely not you're getting botox so, no but so jen i don't know if you do botox you're beautiful you probably do or you're just beautiful regardless but so ali does botox right and every quarter she was going and spend like 600 dollars a quarter to uh do botox well she uh like uh TikTok a bunch of uh, home blue uh, home uh, Botox stuff. I did her Botox last weekend. I like injected her face full of poison. Part of me felt really good about that. It was weird, but instead of set of six hundred bucks, it was fifty bucks. It's like a hell of a deal. Like I want to set up like a Botox party. Let's go, Pete. You want some Botox? You can do some Botox. I, I'm not no, gonna I'm fix good. that. I'm good, dude. I'm fine with. I'm all gay.